What's going on, people? Welcome to United View. Welcome to more transfer news. And I'm not even going to dress it up, guys. Good evening to you guys. Smash the like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'm just going to get straight into this because I'm not happy. Um, and I'll tell you why I'm not happy, because it's not just because this deal's off. But the Rabio to Manchester United deal looks like it is off. Um, we've got some news on that. Um, I've got some strong feelings on what's going on right now and, and this deal. Owen, I'm sure you have, and I'm sure you guys have at home. But let's just deal with the facts of why um, we're in this position where we it seems like the Rabio deal is not going to happen and the deal's off. Owen, what have we got? So we've got a lot, unfortunately. Um, David Ornstein and a lot of credible journalists have uh, reported, tweeted, posted at the last few minutes of uh, at the time of recording here, saying that Adrian Rabio to Manchester United is now highly unlikely. Gap in wage offer slash expectation mean move not happening as things stand. Live talks about other options such as Casemiro. We'll get into that. De Jong improbable, but Manchester United hope to get a top midfielder before the transfer window closes. Uh, Samuel Luckhurst has provided a bit more detail as to why the deal is off. He said that Manchester United have called off their move for Adrian Rabio due to his wage demands. Sources say he wanted a, quote, obscene salary. They're using the word obscene. Now, to give a bit more detail as to what Ornstein has said, as I mentioned, Rabio's move to Manchester United is now highly unlikely to materialize. Uh, the gap between the salary offer and his expectations mean the deal is not progressing. A revival cannot be completely ruled out. However, United are exploring alternative options. Among those alternatives are Casemiro from Real Madrid. Uh, Moises Sacido is also being pushed to Manchester United. Manchester United are thought... This is wild. Manchester United are thought to be in the final stages of deciding where their budget will be best spent and remain confident of adding an elite midfielder before the window closes. Man United were prepared to place Rabio alongside some of the top earners at the this club. This is a bit for me. But Veronique Rabio is thought to have requested a higher level. United were unwilling, uh, unwilling to meet that. So essentially, the deal's off. Rabio wanted a lot of money. United said that's an obscene salary. And now they're moving on to uh, targets such as Casemiro. They're not ruling out Frankie De Jong, Moises Tocido as well. But Flex, ultimately, what it is, is Manchester United now deciding two-ish weeks left of the transfer window, we're gonna, where our money's going to go. Two weeks out, we're now deciding where the money's going to go. And the lack of planning, the panic, the lack of strategy is staggering. Now, I think we're probably quite aligned in this one, saying that, okay, if you wanted a lot of money, fine. You don't want Rabio to come in and be the highest paid player at Old Trafford. But you get you reap what you sow, essentially. And if you get <laughs> if you're panicking, you get instances like this, do you not? Hundred percent. Like, let's just clear this up, right? A lot of people are saying, well, good, we dodged a bullet. We didn't want Rabio. That's not the grievance here. I can get behind that. That's fine. You, we were underwhelmed by Rabio in the first place. So you could you could, you could, could go on that side of the coin of, well, at least he ain't coming. That's not my issue. My issue is basically what you were just saying there, is that this is what happens when you haven't got a clue what you're doing and people see that you're desperate. Rabio and his agent have seen that Manchester United are desperate. So what do they do? Yeah, let's ask for 250, 300 grand a week. Why? Because they need us. Why? Because they're scrambling. Why? Because we hold the cards. Now, okay, cool. At least Man United didn't buckle and give in. Cool, that's fine. But you ain't getting credit for that because you shouldn't be in this position in the first place where you're begging someone like Adrian Rabio to come to the football club. Of course, he's going to try and pull your pants down and ask to be the highest paid player at the club, asking for De Gea money, asking for Pogba money. Because he can't believe his luck. He can't believe his luck that Man United would have come to him with one year left on his deal, probably didn't know what he was going to do this season. Man United will be there. He, he, him and his agent are like, well, let's try and rinse them for every penny. There was already, it says there, Ornstein, very good, reliable source. It already said there they were willing to give him a lot. A lot. And they still tried to push. Why? Because they know we're desperate. And this Casemiro thing, why on earth is Casemiro going to want to come to Manchester United? Why on earth? Again, unless it's stupid money. And even that, even that, Casemiro, yes, okay, cool. Real Madrid got Chiuamini and Camavinga, like the next, you know, the next stage is coming through. You could argue that 
is has he had a conversation with Ancelotti his game time? I don't even want to entertain um Casemiro. To be honest, the Casemiro link, I'm not I'm not even gonna entertain because it's not like I'm turning my nose at a player who's actually decent in his position. It's not that. It's the fact that I look at the football club and I just think it'll be the same bullshit. Let's try and ring someone as good as Casemiro. Why is he going to want to come here? He's just won the Champions League. He's got multiple Champions Leagues. Just won the league. Yes, all right, Camavinga, like I just said, they've got Camavinga and Chiromani coming in. You might see the young bucks coming in and think, oh, OK, I can go and be the main guy at Man United. But we ain't getting Casemiro. We ain't getting Casemiro. And just back to this Rabio thing, you know, again, this is not about, oh, my God, I wanted Rabio. We really need someone. Cool. All right, fine. We're not going to get Rabio. But do you really trust the football club now when we're scraping the barrel, going all around the place to try and get some players that we're going to get linked with someone else? You mentioned Casido, Casido. We're supposed to get him two years ago before he went Brighton. And also look at Brighton. Look, look at the business they did for someone like Kukurea. They got a transfer fee that was way higher than what that player is worth. What was it, 62 million, something like that? You're not telling me that after losing Basuma, after losing Kukurea, they're not going to charge 50, 60 million for a player that they know is not worth it. They and even again, came out and said he's there, but the Kukurea is not going anywhere. Just to exactly. stop their authority say, we're in control of this and exactly. give us our piece. And they did it. And they brilliantly and, wrong and, It'll be the exact same situation like it was with Rabio, is that, and like you said, Rabio and his agent perfectly justified to request that kind of salary because they know Manchester United are desperate. So, in any negotiation, whether it's Rabio, whether it's Casemiro, whether it's Frankie Diong, whether it's whoever, even when it was Arnautovic, Bologna wanted more money for Arnautovic because they knew Manchester United are desperate. And when you're negotiating with a desperate club that's rich, you name your price. And that's what they did. And Manchester United can go, well, that's obscene. And you get you get the smallest tiny bit of credit because you walked away. But you don't get much credit because now they're trying to smoke screen it. Yeah, but we're going for Casemiro. So don't worry about Rabiot. We're not getting Casemiro. Why would Casemiro come to Manchester United really at this quickly, point? Casemiro is better than Rabio. Just while you're saying that, Owen, Rodrigo Fares from ESPN. Um, again, I'm not surprised. He's just come out and said, look, it's easy to just believe it because it's what we're talking about right now in the moment. Casemiro wants to stay at Real Madrid, he said. Like, that's going to be the next thing. Uh, Real Madrid extra, there you go. Casemiro wants to stay at Real Madrid. That's all. It, all it just, it's just a knee-jerk thing that will just start a little bit. Oh, he wants to stay. It's just bullshit. It's, just, it's, it's, it's to soften the blow. You Because, face it, John Murta was in Turin. He travelled there. He met with the agents. He, we saw him when he was getting in and out of the taxi and going in the airport and that kind of stuff. We've seen that how many times? He was in Barcelona. And none of these deals have happened. And again, it's because Manchester United aren't in the position to be like, actually, we'll walk away from that deal now. We've got two and a half weeks. The nerve, think about it, the nerve for two and a half weeks to go for the transfer window that's left. And they're going, we're now just figuring out to deciding where we're going to spend our budget. Shouldn't that happen like four or five months ago? That is insanity. They with, they tried to soften the blow with the Frankie De Jong thing saying it expired. Well, actually, before it expired, we withdrew it. So that was on us. But we're still hopeful of doing that. We're not getting Frankie De Jong. We're not getting Rabio, And again, don't have a problem with the Rabio thing. You shouldn't be getting that much. But you're in that situation because you reap what you sow. And you can't, and I, I tell you what, if I hear now of, yeah, there is a strategy. I mean, there isn't a strategy at this point. The strategy went a long time ago. Now it's, again, panic modes, scattergun settings, and it's Casemiro. Do you pick up the call to just go Varane? What's going on at Real Madrid? What's going on at Manchester United? Pick up the call to Cristiano Ronaldo. What's going on there? No. he just look at the Premier League table. he look at the first two results. That's why Rabia wanted a lot of money because he thought, I don't really even want to go there that much. There's no Champions League football. They're rubbish. You're going to have to pay me a lot of money to run around that pitch for a bit because no one else is doing it at Manchester United either. Yeah, you couldn't believe it's it's not. ludicrous. It is ludicrous. And again, even those sort of smaller Premier League targets, which in reality we should be going for from the start, that's your target should be going for. Yeah, attainable ones. But, but now it's too late. We now can't, it's too late. Exactly. That we, we can't look. I'm not saying like we shouldn't have gone for De Jong in terms of quality wise. Cool, they thought they could get him. But the, the the thing is, they should have stopped a long time ago. That's all right. Cool. But the the reality is, is that top players can't come to Manchester United anymore because top players who value their careers in their in their prime and stuff like that aren't going to want to play for us. So you know what? When we are linked to Mateus Cunha and people like that, who are like I'm not, even, we're not going to get him. But you know those types of players that we don't know much about. Yeah, that's what it is. That's what it. That's the new Man United. 
We are we are the Liverpool of the millennium. Where where you get That's an Aquilani, where you get a Milan Barros, where you That's it. Where, where 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 you get a um I don't know whoever else Raul Morales or something like that. Like that's what we are, and and the sooner that and the sooner that we realise that and adopt that as a strategy of how to build properly, then you know because to to lose Rabiot and then try and go and get Casemiro, what you mean? What what? What? Why didn't you go and get Casemiro before Rabiot then? Tell me that. Tell me and that. Also, well, what is it again? This is not Football Manager or FIFA. This it isn't. You can't. <laughs> we're going to get Casemiro. No, we're not. We 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 are not. Unless, like you say, because let's face it, if we've got Casemiro, you'd be like, an unbelievable sign. I don't know how they've pulled it off. The issue is United have pulled nothing off of real substance in this transfer window. In reality, you know, a big deal. Ornstein is saying United are hoping or willing or, or sure they're going to get in a world-class or high-profile midfielder. Oh, what elite before, midfielder is that? Who? Who? Yeah, before elite. the transfer window closes. But oh, who? Oh, yeah, my ass. It's it, like it's just... And as you mentioned, getting top-class players is out of reach at Manchester United. I mean, it's technically isn't when you do it really early on in the window and they might be for sale for a cheaper price and the stigma of the season hasn't begun yet and there is a bit of optimism and hope that you could get him through the door in the project, blah, blah, blah. At this point, there is zero attractive about Manchester United. Before, all we had was before all we had was the manager. And even, even already two games in, people will be like, well, I don't even know what's going to happen with the manager. Because you don't. There's a blame game going on at United at the moment. They're blaming Cristiano Ronaldo for it, for their playing badly. You know, and if you've got people, and if you've got people like Rabio and Casper who have played with him, who would probably like Ronaldo, they're looking at that going, "Why would I go there? <laughs> Why would I do that?" Bro, the only thing, the only thing we've got is money, right? And even that, like Gary Neville said, people don't even want our money anymore. Like, like certain, you know, Frankie Young doesn't. You know, like obviously, yes, he's got he got wants to get his own and all that, but he, yeah, he wants to get his own first before he takes ours. Um, and that's the that's the long and short of it. Like that is the long and short of it. Like when you did, remember I said to you uh, in, the, in the show the other day, MLS settings. That's that's what we're doing. That's 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 how we're moving. We're even moving like a, a club that's happy to have people who used to be good or used to be in their prime will take you, or um, we're going for players that nobody else wants. But but by accident, it's not like we've. If we, do you know what? I wouldn't even have minded because this is what Ralph was saying about realigning the type of players that we want. We want young, hungry players who are ready for their next logical step in their careers. Like, if we would have realigned with that, so we're getting guys from the German League and the French League and, um, you know, other other Premier League teams lower down the table and stuff, and then, you know, trying to build them up and going down that route, I'd be okay with it if we did that from minute one of the transfer window and stuck to it the whole time because that's our new strategy. Again, I keep using Arsenal as an example. That's what they did. That's what they did uh, with sprinkling winners on top with like Jesus and Zinchenko. But the, the window before was exactly the window the type of window that we needed. Sambi Lukonga, um, Tavares. All right, it didn't work out, but that you know that type of profile. Even ben like White, Liverpool. Even you know, like Liverpool. You look at those signings they made. The Salah was from Roma, 30, 35 million from Roma. People thought it was a flop. Roberto Firmino came from Hoffenheim. He was an attacking midfielder, got changed into a false nine. Mane came from Southampton. They were hardly high-level elite players when they got them. Van they were Dijk players came that were on Southampton as well. They were on players that were on the ascendancy. You know, yeah. yes. Then they got into the position where they can bring in an Allison, or they, you know, what I mean, they can get yeah. those higher profile Tiago, whatever. But initially, they were like, well, you know, we're not, this at the moment, I mean. we're not the most the, attractive it's offer. The, it's the arrogance of us to think that we don't need to do that. We can just chase top, you know, top level things. Now, don't get me wrong. The, the the counter argument to that could be, well, you got Sancho, Ronaldo, and Varane in the last window, so it shows that there's pull. Or, well, that's gone even, now. Even that, you know, it was with Champions League. We had finished second the season before and Europa League final. And there was, a, bit was, a, there was a feeling of, oh, maybe there might be something happening. You Not know, now. now there is an oh, absolute okay. expectation around Europe that nothing good is happening at Manchester United. Nothing. And you even if you be- were. Even if you were thinking about possibly going, I might go to Manchester, I don't, I don't know. Say you were an Anthony. Now, you would see what's happened in the first two games. You would see what's currently happening now of all of these stories. You go, I'll tell you what, I'll wait till next year because I don't know what's going on. And guess what? There's a World Cup in December. You know, Louis, Louis van Gaal, he was right to your in timber. <sighs> Mate, avoid it. Avoid it. Louis van Gaal said Manchester United isn't a football club. They're a commercial club. Looking very commercial right now, Flex. And Very everyone would say, oh, oh Louver House is still just salty. a bit old man. He's, he's not still salty. No, he's, not. he's got first-hand experience of seeing it and could see that this shit wasn't going to change. 
Honestly, yeah, I'm exactly the reason we, we've, we've kept Ronaldo is a commercial decision at this point. <laughs> well, when you read the thing saying that Joel Glazer wants to keep him, but Ten Hag doesn't, again, look, you, you don't want to lose focus and start reading and re believing every single report. But we're just going off the ones that are actual big, you know, the fact that the Rabio deal's off. And again, it's not the fact that the deal's off that is making me angry or that we have the issue with, it's the fact that. You know, it came down to money and him wanting to rinse us. And that, my friends, is what's going to happen to Manchester United a hell of a lot. No, forget in the future, now, in the next 14 days. That's all that's going to happen. Agents, players, clubs. So from transfer fees to wages to contract length to add-ons, all this shit, it, we're just going to get our pants pulled down because we're desperate. Because we're Cunha. crying out for players and everybody knows it. We're even saying, well, we got, like you said, we've got some cash here. We've got some cash. Not sure where to spend it any day because we've got some cash. That's all we're doing now. We've got some cash. Don't really know where to spend it. We'll fight. We'll, we'll, we'll work it out. That's what's happening. Unreal. Imagine, Unreal. Having, imagine having a budget meeting as to where you're going to spend your money in the transfer window two weeks before it closes. That in, that meanwhile... Your rivals, and even you have to say that loosely this season, because who are we rivaling? But your, ri but, your, but your rivals, their business was done a long time ago. <laughs> a really long time ago. And we had more to do than them. We had more to do. And look, Flex, you know, we sat here several times, I know I did, saying, you know, judge the, the window once it closes when it comes to Manchester United. There's always a, already a very firm judgment on this window. And the frustrating thing is we've got just over two weeks left. And the feeling is that, it's going to get worse because whilst United may want to do business and they may want to bring in an elite midfielder, I would be flabbergasted if we brought one in between now and then. An elite midfielder. That's not saying we won't bring in a midfielder, but an elite midfielder, who is there to get? Who is there to get that's available? And most importantly, who wants to come? Who, who actually wants to come to Manchester United at this point that isn't for an astronomical amount of money? I don't know. I don't have the answers to those questions. And, well, I, and the, the concerning thing is, minutes, I don't think the club does. The last couple of minutes, Alex Crook, I mean, you know, he says a lot of stuff and has some links as well. Um, he said that <laughs> Moise Casido is not for sale. Duh. Of course he's not. Of course he's not. He's just come to Old Trafford and Rinse does and seen how shit we are. Just ran the game. Unless it's, unless it's for, you know, 60 million, 70 million, you know, then maybe he's exactly. for sale. Yeah, but even that's exactly. the that because that's, that's what they do with Kukurea. And again, they we should have got him for what five million, seven million, or some cheap price. I remember seeing him linked with us last summer. Or was it summer before that? I can't remember when Brighton got him. Yeah, they yeah, get before him last we year. went to Brighton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, he scored against before. us at the Amex, yeah. and everyone went, Oh, he was gonna he was gonna yeah. go, he was gonna go United. Yeah. So it was it was last summer, not last summer. Yeah, last summer, then Brighton, he ended up going to Brighton before oh, we went to Brighton. And look at the kid. Look now in a system that actually works, a system that's actually been thought of in a club that actually has a plan. There's so many good examples of good of 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 well-run football club. It's not like there's a lack of like ideas of what to do. Big Man United. Let's look at Brighton. Actually, I mean, oh, let's look at how Arsenal have reformatted. Oh, let's look at West Ham. At least they're doing something. You know, there's so many other clubs. Forget just li the obvious Liverpool and and City. There's teams that should be below us that aren't because they're better than us right now. There's teams that should be below us. They've got well, way better flex, structure. Than there's us. nobody below us. Oh yeah, we're <laughs> bottom, of the, bottom, bottom of the table. Bottom but the even, table. this is this is a frustrating thing as well. Again, to go back to the Rabio one, I don't want this to come off like we're complaining. Oh, we didn't get Rabio. Blah blah blah. Look, if it was too much money, it was too much money. But this was meant to be the quick alternative. Remember that. The De Jong saga, the only reason De Jong saga was long was because of the contract issues, blah, blah, blah. But these other people, these other alternatives, the groundwork's already been done, Flex. We can get this one done quite easy. So we can do this in a couple of days, a couple of weeks. This was sure enough a done deal. Even the alternatives we can't do quickly at this point. And now, remember when I said, remember when I said that we, you know, we were told that, you know, there are alternatives that we can get, yeah, like you said, to get quite quickly. Do quickly. And I, remember I said to you, that worries me. That worries me. That was literally my words. And I remember when I called you, I was like, yeah, I was told this. Well, that worries me. What do you mean alternatives that we can get quickly? Why didn't you get them then? <laughs> yeah. And and was was the idea that you can get them quickly, was that discussions you'd had with the player and the club and the agent? Or is that just an assumption? We can do that pretty quickly. Oh, yeah. You know, like when you're doing your it's 
the day before your homework's due. I can do that pretty quickly. An hour and a half in, you go, I've barely started this. This is a bit of a problem. I overestimated this one. You know, we haven't done any deal quickly apart from Alassia. And that was a simple deal with a smaller player. To get to do uh, to do a deal with an elite midfielder, that doesn't get done quickly. No, <laughs> it doesn't. No, uh, and it, and, it, and it doesn't get done at the back end of the window, like out of nowhere for cheap um, for for cheap, like a team like Man United. I, I am, I'm not lost. Well, I keep saying I'm lost for words, but I keep finding new words in every video. But I am lost. I am lost for words again. The Rabio deal is off. It seems, um, again, you can go on the side of, you know what, we dodged a bullet. You can go on the side of, at least we didn't give him it out of desperation. That'll be another thing. And that's what I mean about Man United. We can't even, we, we can't give praise for even going, well, well done, Alicia, because it's all your own fault, Manchester United. Well done for being in a position two weeks of the window where you was even chasing Rabio, And even that, even that which was supposed to be quick, that's now turned into like what week and a half now, pushing two weeks. Right after the it. Brighton, right after the Brighton game, wasn't it? Yeah. So right, we're looking so like ten days, something like 10 that. Ten days pushing, you know, pushing two weeks. You know, oh, there's talks Rabio might be in for the Liverpool game. See how? Is he hell? Of course he was never gonna never. Frankie De Jong's gonna be a player for the Liverpool game as well. Honestly. You know, I, I, get ready I, I, for Milinkovic Savage is gonna be a player for the Liverpool game. That'll be the next one. It's the roller decks of players, you know. Then you try and then you try and go go get the Casado kid, who you didn't want to get a year ago, who scored against who scored against us once, bossed us twice, came and shat on us at Old Trafford last a uh, couple of weeks ago, ten days ago, and now you want to try and do not Brighton's door and say, let can we take you take your best player now. When because you, you just sold your best player and replaced him with this yeah. guy that we well, were they sold. To get. They sold not just their best player, their two best players. So they've got money from that. On top of that, they're a Premier League club, so every Premier League club has money. Realistically, no Premier League club really has to sell anymore. It's not. It's not the 1990s where Manchester United can just buy the players in the lower half of the league because they need the money. No Premier League clubs needs the money at this point. I know about this Neil Mope as well. Do you know what I mean? So you know what? What are Brighton going to do? Do you think a well-run club? Do what we do, which is near the end of the window, panic and not and, and and abort their plan, which is they've done their business, they're settled, they've had a decent start to the season. Oh, let's sell off, let's unsettle our squad. You know, I just I, I'm lost for words, mate. It makes me sick. It really, really does. And and you know what? Throughout the window, when it's early doors before you get to this stage, because I'm a person that I'll deal with it when I get there. That's me. Yeah. I, I we we could have chose to do this from early doors, like a lot of people did do. But mm -hmm. when you see it like this, you just think, you know what? Every window, I may as well just be like this from the start. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll for me like once. Come, come, come January, come January, yeah. come next year. You know, if I'm here next year, unless there is some radical change at the club, which, again, there won't be. But if there's some radical change, then, you know, you'd be you'd be hypocritical, wouldn't you? To go fresh start, you know, <laughs> learn from the next year mistakes because they haven't learned from a decade of them, Flex. Exactly. So, or even longer. So, w w why would we expect any change? And again, more fool us. We were smoking the hopium, and now we're going through withdrawals on it because, like you said, you, you do get lost for words. And just when you think, because we're always, a, a, you know, as fans, after the first two games, you're basically we're on the floor, you know. And just when you sort of decide, okay, I'm going to get up here and dust myself off, you just get another kick to the gut and go. Oh. <laughs> and then we've got a game next uh, six days from now. At Old Trafford, under the lights, Monday night football against our arch rivals who haven't had a good start to the season, but they've not been playing badly. And they're going to be fired up and we are just at the lowest of lows. And um, Well, Wolves, Wolves just signed that new midfielder, isn't it? Or for like 38 million. Let's see if you the know, Neves thing. Maybe they just try going for Neves and put all of the young money on him and then pay over the odds for Neves as well. Well, Wolves, remember Bruno Large was like, oh yeah, 100 million. Well, guess what? Wolves probably would do that. I'll say that. And then they'll settle for 75, 80. Like, honestly, you can just see it coming. You can see it coming. And, and then Frankie will go to Chelsea. There you go. There you go. I just... Uh, anyway. Anyway, there you have it, guys. Um, that's the latest uh, news at the minute. Rabio deal is off. Um, there you go. Well, I've I got nothing left. I've got nothing left. We'll see what happens tomorrow morning. Transfer view, 9 a.m. God knows what, because now that deals off. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. 
God knows what we're going to talk about then, but there will be something. So let us know your views. Let us know your comments um, on this Rabio deal. Let me just clear it up. Of course, dod dodging a bullet. At least we didn't give him the money, but I ain't letting him off that ease. I didn't want. I didn't want to give that too much airtime. That goes without saying. Good, don't give him the money, but it doesn't take away from where we are right now and why we're in this position. There's complete lack of planning. So they don't get they don't get the pat on the back and well done for not giving him it um, because they don't deserve that. Um, and who do you think we're going to get? There you go. Um, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new guys. See you tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. sharp. Peace.